competence. All these are geared towards continuing EU recognition of Philippine-issued STCW certificates. And to realize the objectives mentioned, Marina has embarked on a whole-of-government approach through the issuance of a comprehensive action plan which covers four major components. The first is harmonized legislation which pertains to the issuance of additional legislative measures that would harmonize STCW implementation in our country. Second is interagency cooperation by which through the harmonized legislation, we will foster a stronger cooperation between Marina, CHED, DOH, and the PCG, which are all involved in STCW implementation. And the third is responsive national provisions, which pertains to the issuance or amendment of more responsive Marina, CHED, DOH, and PCG rules and regulations in accordance with the harmonized legislation for the effective implementation of STCW requirements. And fourth is by having a comprehensive internal process which refers to the significant reforms in governance, efficient public service, and ensures that only qualified seafarers shall be certificated in accordance with the STCW convention. Paving the way towards a harmonized STCW implementation, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte signed Executive Order No. 63 in sep on September 21, 2018, which provides for the harmonization of STCW implementation between and among Marina, CHED, DOH, and PCG. Also provides for the composition of the Technical Panel for Maritime Education and the strengthening of Marina's authority as single maritime administration. The executive order provides under Section 2 and 7 for Marina, CHED, DOH, and PCG to come up with an implementing rules and regulations thereof. And that is why the IRR has been crafted, and the salient features are as follows. Based on our comprehensive internal process that provides a system which prepares to train, implements to train, and evaluates after training to measure the performance of our out output or product, the IRR was conceptualized and formulated. This is intended towards producing world-class and competent seafarers. The salient features of the IRR are as follows. Under maritime education, training and assessment of seafarers pertaining to preparation, evaluation, inspection, and approval of high maritime higher education programs. Marina shall take the lead in the evaluation, inspection, of all applications for approval of BSMT and BSMARI programs. The MHEIs shall, on the other hand, ensure that the BSMT and BSMARI students who have complied with academic requirements as provided under the relevant CHED policies, standards, and guidelines in line with EO63 and the IRR shall be provided with a shipboard training slot. The authority to operate BSMT and BSMRE programs shall be issued by CHED in, with the recommendation of Marina. And Marina and CHED shall immediately review jointly all existing policies, standards, and guidelines governing BSMT and BSMRE programs in accordance with EO63. Marina shall take the lead in the evaluation and inspection of all existing MHEIs uh, that have been granted uh, approval or government recognition by CHED to operate BSMT and BSMRE programs. And consequently, CHED shall revoke 
previously granted authority to operate BSMT and BSMRE programs upon recommendation by Marina based on the result of evaluation and inspection. When it comes to implementation of approved maritime higher education programs, Marina shall, in coordination with CHED, continue to monitor and verify all approved maritime higher education programs. Marina shall conduct surveillance of MSCIs offering these approved programs and any violation thereof shall be governed by the existing relevant rules and regulations of Marina and CHED. The executive order also provides for the composition of the technical panel for maritime education. As we may all know, by virtue of RA 10635, the TPME shall be chaired by the Marina Administrator. And EO 63 provides for its composition, having nine members, five of these nine members shall be nominated by Marina, and four members shall be nominated by CHED. The TPME members shall then be appointed by the CHED Commission and Bank. As regards the standards for medical fitness and issuance of medical certificates, the IRR provides that Marina and DOH shall jointly establish the policies and standards for medical fitness, requirements for recognition of medical practitioners, and procedures for issuance of medical certificates. Marina and DOH shall also ensure regular monitoring and surveillance of assessment activities conducted by recognized medical practitioners. With regard to control as required under the STCW Convention, the uh, IRR provides for control procedures under the STCW wherein Marina and the PCG shall jointly establish the control procedures without prejudice to the port state control of functions of the said agency, of the PCG in particular. The PCG shall also verify Filipino cadets who are undergoing shipboard training on board all ships calling Philippine ports. And with the utmost commitment and cooperation, Marina, CHED, and DOH, together with the PCG, finalized the IRR of EO63 through a calibration workshop held in 19 October 2018. It is for this reason that we are all gathered here today to witness this momentous event in the history of STCW implementation in our country. Thank you very much and mabuhay po tayong lahat that Marina, in coordination with other government agencies, issue the necessary implementing rules and regulations to the said executive order. Today, Marina is proud to report the completion of the said implementing rules and regulations to EO 63. For this, Marina would like to thank the Commission on Higher Education, the Philippine Coast Guard, and the Department of Health for working and collaborating closely with Marina to achieve this milestone. The IRR includes provisions for the following, maritime education, training and assessment of seafarers, the reconstitution of the technical panel on maritime education, standards for medical fitness and issuance of medical certificates, and control procedures for the STCW. These provisions would ensure that the Philippines will continue to be compliant with the standards of competence and performance as provided by the STCW Convention, and thereby secure the continued recognition of certificates of Filipino seafarers. After the issuance of this IRR, Marina will join CHED in the conduct of a review of existing policies and regulations related to maritime education, consistent with the intent of the IRR. Marina will also be working and collaborating closely with other government agencies and maritime stakeholders to be able to give full effect to the executive order and other national provisions 
governing the seafaring industry. In closing, I would like to reiterate the firm commitment of Marina to its mandate not only as a single maritime administration of the country, but also as the agency responsible for the development, promotion, and regulation of standards of the Philippine maritime industry. Again, to CHED, the Coast Guard, and the Department of Health, and to all of you, thank you and good morning. Thank you so much, sir. And I would just like to inform everyone that we are uh, nakalive po tayo sa Radio TV Malahanyang and the Marina Facebook. And to give also a statement for the Commission on Higher Education, we have our very own chairperson, Presporo de Vera III. Thank you. Uh, Ambassador uh, Carlos Salinas, Administrator Ray uh, Guerrero, uh, Attorney Rodel Flores of the Department of Health, uh, Commandant uh, Elson Helmohino of the Philippine Coast Guard, our Oversight Commissioner on Maritime Education at the CHED, Commissioner Ronald Adamat, Attorney Cindy Haro, our Executive Director at the Commission, Director Ami Biglete, who is the one working very hard on this over the past months. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. We at the Commission on Higher Education recognize that full and effective compliance of the Philippines to the STCW Convention can be attained through concerted efforts of relevant government agencies. This is the reason why the Commission in Higher Education and Marina agreed on a five-point uh, agenda or a five-point program last June that was signed together with uh, Secretary Tugade in Malacanang and submitted to President Rodrigo Roa Duterte in a cabinet meeting, uh, putting together the framework for the new approach to compliance between the Commission and Marina. The provisions of this five-point agenda has been incorporated in Executive Order 63, which was signed by the President last September 21. The details of this have already been discussed in the salient features of the IRR earlier before uh, before uh, or when we started this program. To this end, Marina, or Ched and Marina, agreed to jointly exercise supervision of maritime higher education institutions, with Marina leading the review and inspection of requests for government authority, as well as in the monitoring and evaluation of existing MHEIs and review of curriculum which are now operationally possible by virtue of the provisions of Executive Order Number 63. Rest assured that CHED will work closely with Marina as the lead agency in ensuring effective implementation of the STCW Convention of 1978 as amended to ensure that the country remains in the white list of countries eligi eligible to supply qualified and competent seafarers to the world's seaborne trade. It is uh, interesting to note that in the past, Marina and CHED has had their differences in approaching and addressing maritime education concerns. To this end, I am happy with the appointment of Ray Guerrero, who is also my fraternity brother, for uh, providing leadership consistent with the direction of President Duterte that all government agencies must work together to address problems. As a testament to the commitment, therefore, the Commission on Higher Education of the Commission on Higher Education, I, as Chairman of CHED, will be affixing my signature to the implementing rules and regulations of Executive Order Number 63. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat po, Chairperson De Vera. And to give his statement in behalf of the Department of Health, we have Attorney Rodel Flores. 
Good morning to our distinguished guest, to the Marina people, to our members of the other agencies. Good morning. We'd like to congratulate Marina for coming up with the Executive Order No. 63. This strengthens the position of Marina as a sole maritime agency and also strengthens the position of the Philippines in the world. We at the Department of Health, uh, we like to thank Marina for uh, soliciting our cooperation and our contribution to this uh, implementing rules and regulations. We will do our best for the benefit of our seafarers and uh, we will continue to do everything to help to support Marina as our sole maritime agency. Thank you. Thank you so much, Attorney Flores. And in behalf of the Philippine Coast Guard, our very own Commandant, Admiral Hermogino, who is celebrating his birthday today. Thank you, sir, for celebrating your birthday with us. To all our uh, disting distinguished guests, our maritime stakeholders, my co-workers in the government, uh, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. First and foremost, the Philippine Coast Guard expresses its deep gratitude for this opportunity to take part in this noble endeavor. The milestone that the Maritime Industry Authority, CHED, DOH, and Philippine Coast Guard shared in looking after the welfare of maritime industry professionals have gone far beyond our agency's individual commitment to the maritime sector. Fully aware of the impact brought by the by losing international recognition of our seafarers, we are together here as one, trying to protect the welfare of our seafarers, their families, and our nation's identity as the leading provider of seafaring professionals to the international maritime fleet. Being your steadfast partner, we have always been consistent in keeping with our common goals of ensuring a safe and secure haven for the shipping industry by ensuring that vessels crew are competent enough to run their ships. It is in this context that we in the Philippine Coast Guard, through the signing of this joint memorandum, demonstrate our full support to the successful implementation of this executive order and assist the Maritime Industry Authority fulfill its obligations and responsibility as the single administration for STCW. The Philippine Coast Guard is positively looking forward to the success of this endeavor for the benefit of our seafarers in particular and the Philippines in general as a strong maritime nation. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Thank you so much, Admiral Hermogino. At this point, we'd like also to acknowledge uh, Director Nicolas Lotero III from the Department of Health. Thank you, sir, for joining us this morning. At this point, we will now proceed to the signing of the implementing rules and regulations. Ihanda na po natin ang camera. Yes, sir, at the last page. And may we request the head of agencies to sign also all pages of the IRR. After the signing today, uh, Marina will publish this implementing rules and regulation in a newspaper of general circulation, which will appear already tomorrow. Because again, as stated in Executive Order Number 63, which was issued in September 21 of 2018, but was published in September 24 of 2018, the 30 days will end tomorrow. Thus, after the publication of the implementing rules and regulations, uh, we will now furnish a copy and a report to the Office of the President through the Department of Transportation 
and a copy of the published implementing rules and regulation will be furnished to the respective government agencies, the Department of Health, the Philippine Coast Guard, and of course, the Commission on Higher Education. Uh, the newspaper that uh, you, we usually publish our uh, regulations is the Business Mirror. Rest assured for the members of the Technical Panel on Maritime Education and the, um, the, the stakeholders, you will have a copy of this once it is published. To our friends from the media who are requesting for a copy, again, we reiterate that we need to have this published first after the signing today. After the signing, uh, we will have the photo opportunity together with our uh, Ambassador Salinas. Uh, thank you, sir, for joining us again this uh, morning. Uh, we are lucky to have you because uh, the report will go directly to IMO in London about this latest development on the implementation of the CCW Convention in the Philippines. Last na lang po. And then after this, we will have the photo opportunity. And then we will proceed, we, we will proceed now with the press conference. So to our friends from the media, please prepare your questions. Sirs, may I request every, uh, all the heads of agencies to please stand and uh, po, the obligatory photo opportunity. Papakita po natin. All cameras. May I request Ambassador Salinas to please join on the stage for the uh, photo opportunity as a witness to this man. And to the technical members of the technical panel, may I request you to please join our uh, Mama Cinderella, Commissioner Adamat, Captain De Los Santos, of course, our Executive Director of the CCW, Admiral Bingson. Hindi na nila alam saan sila titingin <laughs> sa dami na ng camera. Muli pa, maraming salamat po. Let us uh, give everyone a round of applause. Muli for this milestone. We would like to thank uh, everyone for joining. And uh, at this point, inulit po namin, ipapublish pa po natin itong signed implementing rules and regulation before we will furnish an official copy to the other government agencies. So at this point, I will turn over now the microphone to the strategic communication to Joy, ang aking katukayo, for the press conference. 
Thank you so much, Attorney Joy. So at this moment, we would like to give our media friends an opportunity to ask clarificatory questions to our uh, officials here on stage regarding our signed implementing rules and regulations on Executive Order Number 63. So if you have questions, please be very specific on your questions. Say your name, your, your media organization, and then your question. May we have our first question? Yes, ma'am. We have our microphone over there. Good morning. I'm Susan Amoroso of Onboard Magazine and DWAD. My question is directed to Ambassador Salinas because I did not hear anything from him this morning. Uh, sir, how is this uh, I IRR of Executive Order Number 63 going to affect the Filipino seafarers locally and internationally, especially with regards to the IMO? Well, I think to begin with, this is a very memorable day, and it's really a milestone that we are accomplishing today. Thank you for the efforts of Marine Administrator. Gerald Guerrero, Chair Pio de Vera, and of course, uh, DOH, Attorney Flores, and, Co and Admiral Hermos. <laughs> Happy birthday, first, sir. <laughs> well, this is very important, you know, because this is just about the last dot that closes the whole loop about the compliance of the Philippines for STCW. I have been involved in this for many, many years. And everybody has always been seeking, the international community has been seeking for a central maritime authority. And today, this is now in place, signed, and it's going to be implemented. This is strengthens the position of the Philippines as being the provider, the largest provider of seafarers in the world. And it gives more confidence to the international community about the interest of the Philippines to continue and to have this credibility for purposes of not only retaining being the largest provider, but to continue to increase our proportion of seafarers in the world market. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Ms. Susan, for your question. Another question from our media friends. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Good morning, I'm Eric Arevalo from Buhay Marino Diario. I'd like to direct my question to Chairman De Vera of uh, CHED. Sir, what happened now with uh, PMI colleges? Because I uh, read in the papers in the past that uh, each maritime program has been approved via the commission, where in fact, there is an ongoing uh, legal battle between uh, CHED and uh, PMI. Uh. 2011, this is 2011, so this is a seven year concern now that preceded me and Commissioner Tamat in the, in the commission. It has gone all the way to the uh, Supreme Court already. And the courts have sustained the uh, decision and the power of the commission on higher education to address the uh, uh, closure of non-compliant maritime education programs. So that is the position of the Commission. We have always maintained that the, that power resides in the Commission. We have exercised it. Uh, higher education institutions that have contested this decision in the courts have lost the case. So it reaffirms essentially the legal framework on maritime higher education. Sir, follow-up question. Were they able to rectify the deficiencies or are they considered as a new player? They are considered a new, new player because uh, that uh, 2011, uh, 2011 decision uh, was uh, an issue of non-compliance. So uh, they, have to, they have to go through the whole process again. Thank you so much for your question, sir. Another question, ma'am. 
I'm Shani Magnial from Harbor School. Sir, this is all for you. How this IRR affects all the maritime institutions? Sir, uh, <laughs> Armin, okay, Admin Guerreros, please. Uh, for one, uh, this will set the foundation uh, for a more uh, focused and deliberate implementation of uh, relevant policies and provisions that would give full effect to the uh, SDCW Convention. So with this IRR, um, Marina, CHED, the DOH, and the Coast Guard will sit down together to uh, uh, thresh out some of the prevailing issues uh, in our maritime education and training programs for us to be able to really come up with a high standard, high quality uh, training program uh, best suited for our uh, Philippine seafarers that would uh, ensure their competence and uh, performance uh, in the shipping industry. Thank you so much. Another question? Good morning, sir. Uh, my question is directed to Sir Guerrero. Sir, how will this EO uh, ensure the protection as well as competitiveness of our Filipino seafarers? Uh, for one, this would uh, reinforce the confidence of the international organizations on the capability of the marina being the maritime administration of the Philippines in making sure that uh, it gives full effect to the provisions of the STCW Convention in terms of uh, the standards of the training certification and the uh, certificates that we issue to the Filipino seafarers. So with this confidence, uh, our seafarers are ensured that uh, the recognition of the certificates that are issued to them will be recognized by uh, countries uh, that have uh, mutually agreed with the Philippines for the mutual recognition of the certificates. Secondly, uh, this will uh, serve as, uh, as I've said, the foundation for us to be able to pursue a more deliberate and uh, aggressive program to improve our training and educational programs in coordination with JED for us to be able to maintain the standards uh, required for our seafarers and thereby maintain their competitiveness in their international shipping. Thank you so much for your question. April from GNN. Yes, sir. Next question. Please say your name and your media organization. Hi, good morning. I'm Rafi Ayeng from Tinig ng Marino. The, this question goes to Sir uh, General Guerrero, please. Besides strengthening the seafaring sector, are, th are there any move to strengthen other stakeholders such as industries of shipping, shipbuilding, shipbreaking, and, and expansion of PRVs? Thank you. Uh, definitely. Uh, we have uh, parallel efforts to improve the other sectors of the maritime industry. But uh, top of our priority for now is actually the uh, welfare of our seafarers, uh, considering that uh, we are the subject of an ongoing audit by the EMSA. And uh, today we're happy to report that, uh, as mentioned by Ambassador Salinas, we have uh, connected uh, uh, our effort to the last dot that would uh, bring uh, complete fulfillment and uh, compliance to what is being required by the STCW and by the EMSA. And sir, a uh, follow-up question. When will we be expecting the result of the, M uh, the latest EMSA audit? Uh, we're scheduled to submit our uh, final report uh, by end of October. Uh, uh, of course, uh, this activity today will be included in uh, our final report. And uh, from there, we will uh, just wait for the notification of EMSA as to when they will be conducting their audit. Next question, sir. Good morning, everyone. I'm Philip from the Travel and International Maritime E Magazine. Sir, I already asked this question before during the Maritime Safety Week program. But with now with the EO63, I would suppose that all training requirement for those seafarers uh, who come back from tour of duty would be reduced. Because there are some, again, this is again, my coin word for this is yung repetitive training. Would it mean that uh, this will have drastically affect 
uh, and the reduction nila for the training in getting their certificate of compliance. Whether the number of training courses or the uh, programs that uh, would be required for our CPRs would be reduced, that would be uh, the result of uh, the review process that we will be jointly undertaking with CHED and the other uh, government agencies. But what is important is uh, that review that we will be conducting will certainly be intended to streamline uh, the uh, training programs uh, being uh, uh, and, uh, being uh, uh, taken by our seafarers to make sure that uh, all unnecessary trainings will be removed from the program and uh, to make sure that uh, the relevant and unnecessary trainings will be included. Follow-up question, sir? So, sir, meaning to say that you will be also doing some auditing of the standards na ini-implement ng mga training centers? Uh, yes, and we will be conducting this jointly with CHED. Uh, in fact, uh, after this... Uh, after today's signing, uh, we, are, we are already scheduled to sit down with CHED, the Technical Panel on Maritime Education, for us to uh, start the uh, review process natin of the existing uh, circulars and policies uh, on maritime education and training. Yes, sir. Initially, sir, ano pong standard ang, gagawi, ang na nakikita ninyong dapat na gawin sa mga training centers? Uh, Uh, it's at, uh, uh, medyo, ano, it's too uh, premature for me to uh, to make any uh, many uh, make any determination as to uh, exactly what uh, training uh, centers or what training programs or courses. No, it's up to the technical panel. But uh, yes, I'll just give it to uh, yes, the commissioner. Yeah. The under existing law, uh, these are matters that are handled by the technical panels and submitted to the Commission and Bank for approval. When CHED was created in 1994, the law provided that technical panels will be created to bring expertise to decide on particular disciplinal programs, courses, etc. That's why one key element in this executive order is to the constitution of the technical panel to make sure that there is equal representation between government, industry, and academe, so that we can harness the expertise of the, of the three critical sectors. Uh, this is critical because we have compliance with international standards. That's why government must be represented in the technical panel. You have curriculum matters. That's why academe is supposed to be in the technical panel. And of course, our seafarers are going to be employed by the industry. So industry has to be represented there. This is part of the general decision of the CHED to reconstitute all technical panels this year. So we have adopted as a commission a review process to look at how the technical panels will be reconstituted. The technical panel on maritime education is the first reconstituted panel. So these are matters that are going to be jointly uh, discussed, jointly analyzed, and uh, uh, as the administrator said, it, it, it will be presumptuous to give answers now because the technical panel is still has to work on it. But rest assured that the discussions of the technical panel and their recommendations to the commission will of course be made public uh, and the consultations will always be public. All the changes in policy as a general principle are always subjected to public consultation. So the stakeholders will know what is happening. With, with regards to your answer, sir, uh, do you have any timetable? And my last question is this book. We as a seafarers coming on board, pababa na po, can I choose my training center? At as, as of now, most of the time, it's the manning agency who choose the training center na pupuntahan ng mga seafarers. But with this new regulation, would I be given the privilege to choose my own training center? 
uh, you have to understand no, that uh, there are mandated courses no, that you should, uh, the seafarers are required to undergo, and that there are courses, optional or additional courses, no, as that they have to undergo as required by demanding agencies. So, you mga courses that are being required by the demanding agencies, uh, we have no control over them. Kasi ito ay, according to them, this is being required by the shipping companies that hire itong ating mga seafarers. But for the mandatory courses, we can, uh, since this is being regulated by uh, Marina, we, we can uh, determine uh, which uh, training centers. And in fact, we have accredited training centers, no? Uh, and these are the training centers that uh, the seafarers should uh, uh, attend uh, whenever they have their uh, required trainings. Last two questions from our media. Good morning, sir. Uh, Eli Kalimos of CV Magazine. Pardon me, sir. I'm just wondering why an EEO, when there is already a memorandum of agreement between Chen and Marina, and also we already have 10635. Would it be the better step, better move is to look into the IRR of 10635 to, ad to address the issues of between agencies? You have to understand yung IRR na in-implement natin dito is based on an earlier uh, executive order which gave rise to RA 10635. And for us to again, uh, make any revisions no, sa sinasabi niyong IRR, we have to go back to the start from zero no, sa process. And we started right now with yung Executive Order 63, which will give birth to another IRR. Uh, and this IRR would uh, uh, be the one that uh, would uh, introduce refinements and improvements sa ating implementation. Ongoing, sir, yung review ng IRR ng 10635, sir? Uh, with yung, yung IRR natin ngayon dito will be the ones no, that uh, will, be up, uh, will be applied. So this is a refinement of the IRR that is being implemented as part of uh, 10, 10635. Sir, another question. Uh, the more pressing concern is about ambulance chasing and I heard about recognition of practitioners. Previously, we only recognized maritime clinic uh, uh, or medical clinics. Will you be accrediting practitioners and will this address the issue of ambulance chasing? It, it is DOH that will be accrediting yung, ano, medical practitioners, but uh, we will be uh, assisting uh, DOH in the uh, deter determination of the standards uh, to be used. So you are you will be accrediting the practitioners, not only the clinics, DOH. I mean, okay. Thank you, sir. Eh, ano ko lang, uh, Loy, yung EO, yung implementing rules and regulations natin uh, is an improvement of yung existing implementing rules and regulations natin as a result of yung 10635. So what happened is, meron tayong 10635. We came up with an EO that would strengthen yung position na marina in the 10635 provisions and because of that we have to revise yung uh, ating ano we have to improve yung implementing rules and regulations natin thank you so much that ends our final question ma'am gina a uh, last question not a question but uh, i would just like to exp express my support on this uh, executive order number 63 thank you so much engineer nelson <laughs> Ma'am Gina, your question. Ma'am Jay, thank you. Good morning po, sir. Po si Gina ng DWW774. Uh, Nais ko lang pong malinawan kung ano po ang epekto nito doon sa mga eskwelahan, sa mga province. Kasi po nakalagay dito, Chad shall revoke previously granted authority to operate BSMT, BSM. BSMRE programs upon recommendation by Marina based on results of evaluation and inspection. Uh, gaano po karami ang mga eskwela ha, na maritime sa mga probinsya ang nakikita niyong tatamaan itong IRR? Ano po ang gagawin sa kanila? Definitely po kasi maraming mga stakeholder na maaapektuhan ito. 
masyado pa hong maaga para magbilang ng mga ng mga maapektuhan at magsasara dahil yung technical panel po ang magtitingin diyan uh, i think it would be uh, it would be difficult to determine now what the technical panel will produce because they still have to meet and then they'll have to do the review but what is critical is that both Chad and Marina is committed to make sure that there is quality in maritime education. Yun ang non-negotiable. Ibig sabihin, kung hindi compliant, ang usapan namin ni Administrator, kung hindi compliant, hindi compliant. Wala yung payagan nyo kami baging compliant three years from now. We, will, we, will sim we are tightening it because we want to ensure that we produce quality graduates. That is non-negotiable. And that will be the task of the technical panel to go in review. And then they will report to the commission. And the commission uh, and bank will be the one to, to uh, uh, tell the universities, uh, you know, transfer your students somewhere else. Ito naman hindi bago. Chet does this in all fields. Remember before, nung nagkaroon tayo ng problema sa oversupply of nursing, the quality of our nurses were questionable. <coughs> we reviewed and then we told, the, we told the universities, you're not compliant. Many of them agreed and they phased out their programs. It, it may not need that the commission will tell them, stop. Yes, sir. Yeah, nakikita naman ng mga universities, alam naman nila kung hindi sila compliant. Definitely, the process sir. is transparent. Many of them uh, on their own reduce. In fact, in maritime education, a lot of universities on their own, even without being told, already stop their programs. Of course, yes. sir. I'm just curious because in uh, 15 days after publication of this IRR, it will be in effect, and I assume there is already your panel, there is already the technical working group. You have already composed and crafted the technical working group. So, uh, yun lang po yung aking gusto sanang makuha ng paliwanag. But at any rate, uh, nabanggit nyo naman po kung ano to po talaga yung mangyayari. Sabi nyo, matagal pa. Uh, yun lang po. Thank you. Uh, yung proseso ho ng pag-evaluate, metikuloso at saka medyo matagal. Opo, at saka po kasi ano <laughs> hindi eh. Hindi pwedeng biglain. Hindi pwedeng biglain. Opo. It goes to a process. At saka po kasi, it's new eh. The Marina has new power. Uh, pinalakas ang power ng Marina. Tama po ba pagkakaintindi ko namin? Uh, pinalakas ang power ng Marina ngayon. Tama po ba? Uh, ang tingin ho ng komisyon dyan, kaya kami agad-agad nag-agree, is because we want to harness cooperation between agencies. Yun ang number okay. one. Hindi ho issue ng sino mas malaka, sino mas mahina. There is a problem that we have to address. Okay. And in the past, it seems that the government agencies were reluctant to work together. But there is an urgency because there's an October deadline. Okay, yes. sir. Yun, ho ang, yun ang una. Yung ikalawa, we harness the expertise. Kung magaling ang marina dito sa aspect na ito, marina ang lead dyan. Yes. O, pag so, magaling ang CHED sa aspect na ito, CHED ang nandyan. Pag magaling ang DOH, DOH ang na. It's not a, I do not see it as a one-upmanship. It is yeah. government working together. Okay po. So, do you have timetable para dun po sa technical working group? Last na lang po yun. Timetable to ano. May meeting na yata sila. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, sir. Mga sir, thank you po. mag lang ako, mag-react lang sa statement na nadagdagan yung kapangyarihan ng Marina. Yung word na strengthens kasi doon, it is just to give emphasis that uh, Marina is taking the lead dito sa effort na ito, They're being a maritime concern. But that it, it does not mean that uh, CHED will be playing an insignificant role. In fact, sabi nga natin, uh, ito ay collaboration. What happened is actually a recognition of each agency's limitations and strengths. So we capitalize on the strengths we strengthen yung mga limitations natin dito for us to come up stronger and be able to implement a, an aggressive, no? a, aggressive, more deliberate, and more focused uh, implementation ng ating mga policies about maritime education. Thank you very much po. Thank you so much, Ma'am Gina. One final question from Sir Rafi before we finally end our press conference. Uh, sir, um, 
Tanong ko lang yun ngayari kahapon na uh, meeting with the uh, uh, officers or from contingents from the U.S. Embassy that they will express support in developing the Philippine maritime industry. So, what is the pledge of support that uh, the U uh, the U.S. Embassy is uh, has given? Uh, yung yesterday's meeting with the U.S. Uh, trade and uh, representatives from the U.S. Embassy is actually more on yung uh, looking into how the United States could provide assistance uh, to the maritime industry. So it is uh, discussions were uh, in general terms. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much. So f that ends our press conference. Thank you so much to our media friends who contributed to our productive discussion. We are hoping that you enjoyed and uh, finally wait for the publishing of our IRR of Executive Order number 63. Again, I am Joy Gumatay of Marina Strategic Communication Service. Have a wonderful day ahead. Thank you. Maraming salamat.